Hey everybody and welcome back to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. We appreciate you checking it out. Happy Friday. This is the Fridays at 5 p.m. Eastern Time weekly video coming to you from Whiteboard Doctor. Interesting topic today, relevant topic today, one that is a spin-off of a number of videos we've done recently, um, and that is Arcturus. It's the new Omicron variant, XBB 1.16, that really took off in India a couple weeks ago and continues to spread there. And now it's starting to spread around the globe as well, uh, with the United States included. So we're going to talk about a new paper that came out on Arcturus looking at the most common symptoms, things to look out for, things to monitor for as this Omicron subvariant spreads. In addition to that, we'll provide just a general update on case counts, where they're at, India, the United States, etc., etc. So stay tuned. Lots of good info for you. Uh, we also wanted to take care of a matter of business. If y'all aren't interested, you can skip ahead on this part. But we really wanted to do another shout out and uh, really encourage you all to sign up for a new thing here at Whiteboard Doctor. And that is a bi-monthly newsletter that comes out through email. In this newsletter, we're going to do a handful of things. Uh, we're going to provide kind of quick hits, updates. For instance, we also wanted to update you this week on things like bird flu and Marburg virus and some of these other infections that are going on globally, but we just didn't quite have a way to fit it in to this video. That would be something we'd put in the newsletter. In addition to that, we're going to give COVID-19 updates, teach you about new diseases, things to know about your health and wellness, recent papers that came out that are relevant to you. All those types of things are going to go out in this bi monthly newsletter through email. So we really, really, really want to encourage you all to sign up. A ton of you already have, which is very exciting. We're uh, paying for this software that hopefully makes this easy to use. In this video's description and the pinned comment, just like we did in a previous video, we're going to provide this link. If you click on this link, it'll take you to a sign up. This is a just generic email sign up. The software allows us then to get all the emails in one place. When those emails go out, the weekly news, the bi-monthly newsletter emails, there will be an unsubscribe option as well. This doesn't tie you into anything lifelong. It's very low stakes. So please, please, please go to this video's description or the pinned comment and consider joining our bi-monthly newsletter. We really want to get a bunch of you involved because we're excited about it. We think it's going to be something that'll be interesting, educational, and helpful. So that's the end of the plug. 30 second break for our introduction. Don't go anywhere. Then we'll dive right into the video. Hello everyone and welcome to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. Thanks for joining us today. Here at Whiteboard Doctor, our mission is to provide you with free, interesting, relevant, understandable medical education and news for all types of lifelong learners, trainees, and practitioners. We have weekly videos that we debut Fridays at 5 p.m. Eastern Time with bonus medical education videos posted throughout the week. We'd love for you to join the Whiteboard Doctor community and follow along by hitting the subscribe button located in the bottom right-hand corner. We also encourage all likes and comments, even if it is just to say hello. All our video descriptions contain links for additional related videos that might be interesting, so don't forget to check those out. And lastly, a quick disclaimer, none of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety before moving on. With no further ado, stay well, keep learning, and let's get to the video. All right, thanks for sticking around. Arcturus, the new Omicron variant, XBB 1.16, most common symptoms. As an introduction to this, we actually have talked about Arcturus a number of times on the channel. You can see the earliest one was actually a whole month ago when it first started coming around. People started talking about it in India. We talked about it again two weeks ago as cases continued to climb. And then actually again last week. So check out these videos. They'll be linked in this video description. They're also on our page. This is the Whiteboard Doctor YouTube page. If you go to videos, you could see the most recent video preceding today's, obviously. That one from two weeks ago and that one from a month ago. So check those out for a lot of background information. This is going to be more of an update video and then a targeted video on the most common symptoms. So why are we still talking about this? Well, there are have been um, growing cases still in India where Arcturus first took hold. And you can see some headlines here. This is from the India News just as of April 20th. And their daily case counts have actually increased to more than 12,000. And in India, there's eight states that are reporting a rapid increase in daily new COVID cases. And these new cases are primarily from XBB 1.16. So it's something we've been following because if the cases are increasing in India, there's a chance that as XBB 1.16 spreads globally, 
that we might see an increase in cases in other countries. And we've talked about that in the previous videos, whether we should be worried about a surge or a huge spike in cases, and that seems less likely, but not impossible, which is why we're following this closely. So if we look at the Indian numbers, we uh, can go down, this is our world in data, and we'll link this in the video description. It's their work, which obviously we appreciate. And you can see as of April 18th, uh, today is April 21st, today is 4 2023 so a few days back, but obviously it takes time to gather data. You can see that Indian cases here are at the 10,000 mark. This is the seven-day rolling average. The news headline up here actually said up to 12,000, so this line may end up creeping up even higher to 12,000. Interestingly, though, it looks like maybe there's a slight plateau that's starting here. Um, although the Indian news headlines would suggest it's actually going to keep going up rather than plateau. So cases are still climbing. We did put this just for comparison's sake. This is uh, the new cases in India, seven-day rolling average, but starting in March 2020. That's what this date is here. And going to, again, the April 18th, 2023. And we just wanted to put in perspective, as we have in previous videos, you can see a slight increase here in new cases, but not nearly as high as some of these other massive, massive surges. Although it is starting to approach the last surge, which you can see plateaued around here back in July of 2022 in India. So cases continue to grow in India, and those cases are primarily being driven by XBB 1.16. And we talked in previous videos that there's one preprint study, we actually talked about this in last week's video, if you want to check it out, that there's one preprint study that suggests a possible increased degree of infectivity uh, for this subvariant XBB 1.16, uh, which may be leading to its higher growth rate. But with that being said, it didn't seem like it was uh, uh, much more infectious than some of the other XBBs that are cir circulating. And there's no signs, at least at this point, that it doesn't that it causes any degree of increased severity. So it seems like it causes about the same severity of disease as other Omicron subvariants, although we're keeping an eye on that. In the United States, oh, we actually put in a global map. Uh, we thought this was interesting. This is also our world in data. And it's the biweekly change in confirmed COVID-19 cases as of April 19th. And what you can see is that the darker colors over here is a growth in new cases or an increase in cases. And then the blue down here is a decrease in cases. And it kind of shows you the hot spots, right? You can see India here is dark because there's a huge, not a huge, but an increase in new cases in India. Um, and you can see that expands. They have China here, which reporting there may not be a, a, a super, super tight, so unclear. Um, you can see some African countries here, South American countries. A lot of North America is blue, right? This is the USA, this is Canada up here. Um, so there's decreasing cases in the USA and Canada. Um, you can see in a lot of Europe, which is right here, there seems to be a decrease in cases as well. Um, there's kind of a spattering, right? Like in South America, there's a decrease in a lot of cases. You see a lot of blue, but then there's an increase in some countries as well. Uh, in Africa, it looks like a decrease in a lot of places, but then an increase in some places. So we're keeping a close eye because as we know, the way travel is, there's a lot, there's plenty of spillover, right? People don't necessarily just stay within a single country. So there's often spillover between countries. So as we get some of these quote unquote hotter spots in different areas, it'll be curious to see if cases spill over into other countries and cause an increase in cases in those other countries. But this will show you kind of the hot spots globally where cases are increasing and the cold spots globally where cases are decreasing. And we wanted to share that with you. If we go into the United States, this is CDC data, and we can see that cases in the United States are continuing to go down, which is great, that's that line there. Deaths are continuing to decrease, current hospitalizations are continuing to decrease. Now, there's still plenty of cases uh, that are happening, but those numbers are still decreasing, which is encouraging, it's good. We obviously want things to continue to decrease um, in the USA and elsewhere. I'm biased. I live and work in the United States. Um, but a good sign here, which this global map from global map from our world and data shows this dark blue color. Let's mute our computer there. Um, dark blue color, which is a big decrease that they're seeing in the United States in daily new COVID cases. If we look, though, at what variants are causing those new COVID cases, 
we uh, see this chart. We've talked about this chart a lot. Many of you who have watched our videos already know uh, these types of things. But as of April 22nd, and you might say, hey, wait, today's only April 21st. How do they have data from April 22nd? Well, these three dates here, starting April 8th, are model-based projections. So these are kind of, you can call it the old phrasage kind of guesstimates. Their educated guess is based on modeling data of what the variant uh, numbers will look like come these dates. These over here are actual numbers. They've actually crunched the numbers, but it takes time to get all the cases reported, sequenced, then that data organized, calculated, and what that means is there's a lag. So they do model-based projections of what they think the variant percentages will be. Uh, and those model-based projections start April 8th. So we only have real data through April 1st. But those model-based project projections are saying that they think XBB 1.16, the variant we're talking about, the variant that's in India, will uh, equate for 9.6, almost 10% of new cases come April 22nd, tomorrow. So we're seeing it a lot in the United States as well. Um, this just for the for reference last week was seven, it was about 7%. So you've seen a 2% growth in XB 1.16 responsibility for new cases week to week. You can see that the far and away uh, variant that's causing the most cases in the United States is still XBB 1.5. Um, beyond everything else. But XBB 1.16 is growing. And that's what you can see also in this uh, chart right here. The vertical boxes represent how much of new cases are from a certain variant. And you can see that purple is growing every week. And that's XBB 1.16. So the rest of the variant circulating seem to be about stable or the same. Now, XBB 1.91, this blue here, does seem to be growing as well week to week, whereas XB 1.5 uh, seems to be decreasing a little bit, although still obviously the majority of cases. So we're keeping our eye on XBB 1.16 because it is also starting to spread in the United States, and India is the first country to really see a big increase in cases, is the country to gather data from so that we're prepared for what to expect. And what to expect? Well, there was this interesting study. It's in preprint. It was put out in India. You can see here this uh, doctor uh, and this other doctor from the Department of Pediatrics at uh, Meng Mengla Hospital and Research Center uh, in India, where they're seeing more cases, put out this preprint study. Now it's preprint, meaning it has not been peer reviewed, so take it with a grain of salt, but it is still interesting data. And they looked at the characteristics, the preliminary clinical characteristics of pediatric COVID-19 cases during the ongoing Omicron XBB 1.16 surge in this Northern India city. So we do just wanna highlight this data is on kids, pediatric cases. And as such, if you're thinking about adults and symptoms, you're going to have to extrapolate that, which kids and adults are not the same. Now, they probably have a good degree of overlap in symptoms, but they might not be identical. So just take that in context. And we did just want to put a little blurb from this paper. Um, so what they did was they um, looked at a number of kids diagnosed with COVID-19 in their outpatient pediatrics clinic. And then they went through and, and categorized all the symptoms that they were showing to see which symptoms seem most common with this newer variant. Proceeding that though in their paper, they put an introduction and some of that introduction is interesting. So this is quoted from their paper. Uh, obviously their paper is linked in the video description. It's their work, definitely check it out. Um, but they say XBB 1.16, has an effective reproductive number that was 1.27 and 1.17 fold higher than XBB1 and XBB15. And that's in India. Now, if we remind ourselves, if we scroll up, the United States XBB1.5 is still the dominant variant, but they're saying in their experience, they actually saw that XBB1.16 seemed to have a higher reproductive number 1.17 fold higher than XBB 1.5. Not to say that we will see the same thing in the United States or other countries, because each country is different. The populations are different. Vaccination is different. Uh, density of populations 
access to medical care. All that is a little bit different. Uh, so the way a variant acts in different populations is not the same, but it again is good to take all this information from a country that saw a bigger surge um, or an earlier surge of XBB 1.16 as a learning mechanism so that we're prepared. In addition to that, they said virological studies have shown the binding affinity of XBB 1.16 to the human ACE2 receptor is higher than that of XBB 1. And the human ACE2 receptor is the human receptor that the virus attaches to to infect the human cells. So if we have the SARS-CoV-2 virus, these projections coming off of it are called the spike proteins or the S proteins. And then you have a human cell, right? Here's a human cell. And the human cell has these ACE2 receptors that live on the human cell surface. And what the virus does is it uses this spike protein to attach to this ACE2 receptor, which then helps it infect the human cell. So they're saying in previous experiments, XBB 1.16 binds more strongly, has a higher binding affinity for that human cell receptor, which may lend it to be more infectious. Now they did say, as compared to XBB 1, and we know that in the United States and many other countries, it's actually XBB 1.5 that has taken over and become dominant as compared to XBB 1. But still, interesting point. Now they go on to say, the previous, as with previous subvariants of Omicron, this one, it, XB 1.16, has a combination of mutations in that spike protein, that surface protein right here. One that increases infectivity in the spike protein called the T478R substitution, and another that helps evade the antiviral immunity, but attenuates infectivity, so makes the virus a little less infectious called E180V. So these are just mutations that people have studied in COVID over the years, and they have found that this mutation, this T47R mutation, tends to increase the variant's infectivity. Whereas this mutation, the E180V mutation, helps evade antiviral immunity or evade our immunity that we have to the virus, but sometimes makes the virus less infectious. So how those balance out is unclear, but these are some of those red flag mutations that we think about um, that could grant a variant the ability to be more infectious and spread more quickly. And they go on to say neutralization assays demonstrate a robust resistance to of XBB 1.16 to break through infection with sera of BA2 and BA5 which essentially means that if you had previous infection with BA2 or BA5, you don't have that much immunity to catching XBB 1.16, although you may have less likelihood to get severe disease from it. All right, enough of some of the kind of complexity there. We want to get into what symptoms are most likely. What symptoms did they see more likely with XBB 1.16 in their pediatric population? So it was kids. Right? They're not adults, and they categorize them from 0 to 59 months, and then greater than 60 months. In smaller groups, N equals 22 means this group had 22 patients, and this group had 3 patients. And all these individuals tested positive for SARS-CoV-2 virus, or COVID-19. And what they saw was that all of these kids actually had fever, which is a little surprising. Some of these newer variants, we didn't see that much fever, but all of them had fever. Not many of them, though, had high fever. Very few of them had high fever. So all these fevers tended to be kind of low-grade or quote-unquote subjective fevers, uh, F for fever. Not many high fevers, which is good. Many of them, especially in younger kids, had rhinorrhea or a runny nose. That's what rhinorrhea means, runny nose. So the younger kids tended to have a runny nose. The older kids didn't have it as much, but keep in mind this is just three three kids, so not a huge sample size. Conjunctival involvement. This is that quote-unquote pink eye that you've probably seen in news articles. We talked about it last week, and it's kind of taken over as this new symptom that the XBB 1.16 variant causes. And all of it was based off this actually author of this paper, this gentleman here, put out that he was seeing more of this in clinic 
but he had not published anything yet. Now we have this preprint by him. And what he found was about fifth, almost 50% of kids, the young kids specifically, had pinkness in their eyes or conjunctival involvement. And what that is, is let's see if we draw some eyes for you here. We're not the best drawers. We have pupils, pupils, and usually you have whites of the eyes. That's these areas here. They're called the conjunctiva. Well, in these kids, what they're seeing is some redness in the whites of the eyes called the conjunctivitis conjunctiva being the white part and itis being inflammation. And you can see this in a ton of things, viral infections, bacterial infections, allergies, trauma to the eye. Uh, the most common thing you might think about is like pink eye where you get a viral infection. Now do note that they did go on to say that the conjunctival involvement in these kids was mild. There was just a little bit of redness. There wasn't a ton of redness and there wasn't any drainage or kind of stickiness or gooeyness or pus in the eye. So this was mild redness of the conjunctiva. But we didn't really see this with previous variants, especially in kiddos. So this is something to keep in mind, especially as seasons change because allergies can cause some conjunctival redness. And just keep in mind that maybe it could be actually COVID if there's other symptoms to suggest it rather than just allergies, especially in these kiddos where, you know, runny nose, conjunctival involvement, all these things can be from allergies as well. So that is an interesting symptom. It is something to keep in mind. But so far we're seeing uh, low grade fever as a primary one. We're seeing runny nose and we're seeing some pink eye symptoms as more common in these kids with XBB 1.16. Not a lot are having sore throat. Sorry, I don't know why that keeps popping up, but not a lot are having sore throat. Uh, about half are having cough, and this cough is usually a dry cough, so about half are having cough. Uh, Ronkai, this is uh, when you listen to the lungs, so we won't spend too much time on that. Some of these young kiddos had loose stools. About 20% had uh, loose stools, so that's another thing to look at. And then GI involvement with vomiting. So you can see that about, if we just were to average some of this, about 20% uh, are having abdominal symptoms because you can see pain, vomiting, and loose stools. So maybe in these kids, there's also a higher degree of abdominal symptoms or GI gastrointestinal symptoms to keep an eye for with this newer variant. Some had this fine rash, and then the older kiddos had about... Uh, two-thirds of them, two out of the three, had muscle pains and headaches. Now, do keep in mind that these young kids couldn't really report that. They couldn't say they were having muscle pains and headaches. What we took away from this was that in these kiddos, and also no one has looked at it in adults, but we'll keep an eye out because maybe in adults as well, we're seeing more low-grade fever, these upper respiratory symptoms that almost look like allergies, runny nose, some pinkness of the eyes, even with allergies, sometimes you can get this dry cough from postnasal drip. And then a little more GI symptoms as well, loose stools, vomiting, and abdominal pain. So those would be things to keep an eye out for with this new variant. Again, these are symptoms that they studied in kiddos, but also keep in mind for adults. Good news is none of these kids required hospitalization. All of them recovered just with symptom control. And we did want to compare this to what symptoms people have been talking about. If we go back to our page, we actually covered, we'll link it in the video description. Um, it was a little bit ago, top 10 most common Omicron symptoms. We published it a handful of months ago. And Zoe, which was a database that was documenting this, although not updated since October 2022, so a little outdated, but the most common Omicron symptoms at that point were runny nose, headache, fatigue, sneezing, and sore throat. So some overlap, although there wasn't much sore throat, there wasn't much sneezing. The didn't seem to categorize fatigue. The older kiddos who could report it did have headache. And there was a fair amount of rhinorrhea or runny nose, especially in the young kids. So some overlap, but not perfect overlap with some of these traditional symptoms. Uh, more low-grade fever, runny nose, pink eye symptoms, and then GI symptoms, gastrointestinal symptoms to keep in mind. 
Hopefully that was interesting. Hopefully that was educational. Let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. Definitely please go uh, consider signing up for that email newsletter at the link in the video description uh, as well as in the pinned comment. We'd love for you all to join. Remember, it's low stakes. You could always unsubscribe if you're no longer interested once it starts coming out, but lots of good information planned. In any case, enjoy your weekend. Stay well, keep learning, and we'll see you next time.